Hey guys, David here. So I wanted to uh, quickly show you uh, or, or make an accompanying video to go with today's blog post where I'm showing you how to uh, doctor up your opt-in forms even if you do not have uh, you know HTML and CSS skills. Uh, so let me show you, uh, this will be you know a real loose tutorial here. I'm not going to go through the entire procedure, but I just kind of want to show you what I'm talking about. So I'm sitting here inside of my Aweber account, and I'm sitting on one of my opt-in forms, and you go to publish. This is where you can go and you can get your, your HTML for your opt-in form. Now, what I usually do is go to I will install my form, now, a lot of people, they just take this JavaScript snippet and they go and they put it on their blog. The problem is, what you're going to get is one of their pre-formatted opt-in forms. You really don't have any way of, of, of modifying the look and feel when you use JavaScript. So what you want to do is go over to the raw HTML version. Now, typically, this little box right here is going to be checked, which it says include beautiful form styles. Uh, and it's got all this CSS gobbledygook in here because it's trying to make your form look all pretty. But in the, in the end, it's really just kind of getting in the way. Uh, so what I usually do is uncheck that and it removes all that stuff. And then what you're left with is pretty much just your basic HTML code for the form. And just, whoops, you want to copy just... Yeah, I want just that code. There we go. Just copy uh, to your clipboard that HTML code. And then you could just go over to your, your WordPress blog and paste that in there, but it's going to look pretty unformatted. That's the whole idea. So let me get this out of the way. This is on my computer. This is Dreamweaver. Now, this is not a free HTML editor. It just happens to be what I have. Uh, but pretty much any what you see is what you get HTML editor is going to have an HTML view, which is where you can see all the code, and then it's going to have an area down here where you can design. Now some programs they have it in different tabs where you have to flip back and forth. Uh, this program happens to be able to give me the split view where I have code and then I've got the design below. So what I'm going to do is in the code view, I'm just going to you know highlight everything, get rid of it, and then I'm going to paste in what AWeber gave me. Now if we come down here and hit refresh, you're going to now see a fairly basic setup down here in the design view. Now all these little lines and stuff, that's just showing me where all these little layers and stuff are that AWeber left in there. Um, but you don't really need any of that. All you really care about is these this form with the name, this form with the email, and the submit button. And then if you go and you look in your HTML code that they gave you, you're, you're going to see all these little hidden fields these that say input type equals hidden. Uh, you're going to want to make sure all that stays intact. And then there's also this form, post, blah, blah, blah. You're going to want to make sure that stays where it's supposed to be. And then down at the bottom, you're going to have the ending form tag, so you want to make sure that stays there. And then right above that, you're going to see this image right here that's really just pulling in this displays.htm gobbledygook. What this is is your tracking image. And you're probably going to want to leave that there. That way, a Weber can tell how many times the form has been loaded. Now, if you're using a different uh, solution like MailChimp or something else. I don't really know what their tracking image thing looks like, but I'm pretty sure they have one. So whatever it looks like, just leave that in place. But realize that everything else around those things you can leave intact. So again, you're thinking, well, you're getting into code here. So let's go back down to the design part and realize that you can modify this as you see fit. If you want this to say something like your name, you can do that. If you want to bold it, you can highlight it and, and bold it. Um, now, if you want to insert an image of your ebook or whatever you're giving away, then just put your cursor where you want that to be. And uh, see, yep, yeah, right here. I would go and select an image source and put it in. Um, you can go wherever you want this to be. Click or subscribe to get my free ebook. I mean obviously I'd put more work into it than that, but you know, you can you can put what you want in here and you can format it. You can put an image right here and left align it or right align it. Um, you can also if you, submit is really not a good word for that opt-in form. So if you go down here you can 
click on value and you can say um, opt in now or whatever you want that that button to say uh, and you can see how it starts to change these things and you can get as fancy as you want and not only that if with a good program you can actually like uh, put some CSS code together which is style sheet stuff and you can do it without really getting into the code that much um, I'm not going to get into doing that here on video but basically just just mess around with whatever program you're using and you and you can change it now one other way to go and I'll just make mention of this real quickly I'll let me create a document here um, this HTML is fine. So we get this blank document. The other way that you can go is to create your form from scratch right here. So let's say you wanted to um, put in a table. We'll put in, let's say, three rows. Let's put four rows and two columns. That's good. And then what you can do is put in, let's, let's merge these. Uh, it's been a while since I've used this program, but merge them and then you could put in some cool text here and this cell you put in name and in here you would put in your form so you go to form and you just hit a little button to see this is probably yep text box call it anything you want it doesn't really matter because um, e no um, and then we'll just copy that paste it right there here you can put in email and then let's say right here you want to put in your button so you go up here and hit that and we'll say we want to say uh, subscribe now I haven't added a form tag yet oops looks like I put that in the wrong spot but you get the idea you can design it from scratch and then what you would do after you've got this all prettied up the way that you want is you go to your code and you take this uh, HTML let me see da, 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 da. where'd that code go and all this stuff you take those key elements that I showed you before the form the hidden tags and stuff like that and you simply go over there and add them where they need to be so probably at the beginning of the table right here you would put in the form uh, and your imp and your hidden fields uh, this uh, field right here is your, your let's say your name so you just copy whatever HTML code Aweber gives you as and put it right there same thing for your email field uh, down here underneath the table you could put in your ending form tag and that tracking image so basically you can take whatever it is that you've designed and you can just kind of superimpose Aweber's HTML on top of it so this is another way that you can kind of you know doctor out the opt-in forms long story short you can do this yourself. It might take a little bit of trial and error. Don't worry about it. But it is going to probably be better than using the pre-formatted or pre-designed opt-in forms that come with uh, Aweber or prob or whatever email solution that you use. Because usually they're kind of corny. I mean, uh, <laughs> let's see, design. I, I haven't even looked at these things in a while. Let's see, show templates. Yeah, I mean, kids, stadium, I mean, who's going to put these things on their blog with a wait thing? I mean, they all look the same. They all say submit for the most part. They're just not that great. And anybody looking at your blog can pretty much tell that all you've done is copy and paste a default opt-in form. Ideally, your opt-in form will kind of match your site and will be designed in such a way to really stand out. And that's why modifying your forms can make a lot of sense. All right, so hopefully that helped. Talk to you soon.